Come here, bear. Ah. Oh, sweet thing. That one. That's a big old fish. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what, Edwin, we have smoked them today. Hey, guys and girls, let's talk about a little old school bass fishing. Old school, how old school can you get than Texas rig bass fishing? Let's just kind of run through a little bit of a few things on Texas rig that kind of help you catch more fish. Uh, I've got a, a six foot nine uh, Jimmy Houston Blaze Series rod right here with a $350, I think they're $380 now, loose titanium reel on it. Now, you want to feel like what a $350 reel feels like when you throw it? Pick one of these up and throw it, and you'll notice a big difference. Yeah, the rod, $59 rod, one of the Jimmy Houston Blaze Series rod, six foot nine, six foot six, or six foot nine is my preferred length on this. And uh, a Texas rig, one thing you'll notice right here, and I'll talk about it a little bit more, is one of the things, if you'll see here, as I pick this rod up, and I've been fishing with this rod today, as I pick it up, you'll notice that I have it wrapped around my rod. I've gotten a habit as I'm fishing, when you lay a rod down, to either hook it on one of the eyes up here, hook it in a rod holder, or a lot of time I hook it on my reel. Now, a lot of really top professional pros will tell you, do not hook a hook on your reel. I really don't know why, but they, I guess they don't want to scratch their reels up. Really, I'm not really caring whether I scratch that reel up or not. I just want a reel that throws really, really good. But once you do that, just reach up here about halfway and wrap it two or three times like I do right here before you lay it down. You know, a lot of times we keep three or four rods on each side of the boat. Sometimes five or six rods get on one side of the boat. If you're Brian Thrift, you have nine rods on each side of the boat, or Tommy Biffle. But, uh, and if you've got that line out, you're going to pick up a rod, and many times it'll be tangled into the other rod. It's going to cost you time. It's going to allow you probably to miss some water that you might have caught a fish on that you wouldn't. So always wrap that. When you get ready to fish it, all you got to do is pick it up, and you can just kind of drop it down a little bit, unwrap it right there, and you got it back, and you're ready to fish. Now, I've been fishing this bait this morning. This is a big Lucky Strike sneaky steak. And I'll just use it here to talk about, and then I want to show you the new Hydro Worm because that's quite a, quite, a, quite a worm combination that Lucky Strike has come up with. But this is where I've been fishing a Texas rig. And I'm just going to show you way I, what I do on this Texas rig. We'll just start from scratch. Now I've got a 4 aught Daiichi hook on there. And I've got a quarter ounce slip sinker, just a regular slip sinker. You can use regular lead slip sinkers. You can use painted slip sinkers. I just buy them at Bass Pro. A slip sinker is a slip sinker. Uh, the painted ones, I kind of like a little bit better. They look better to me, but I've caught a jillion, a bazillion fish on, uh, on just a regular lead color sinker. I've got a Jimmy Houston knot in here. We've showed you several times how to tie that Jimmy Houston knot. We'll do that again sometime in the next few days, we hope. But uh, so I've got that. And you want to, thinking about that weight, you can peg that slip sinker by taking a, a toothpick and stick it down in the front of it and the back of it, breaking the toothpick off. You want to wet your line a little bit before you put that toothpick down in there so you don't damage your line. And now, you're, now you have a slip sinker that is a non-slip sinker. It will not slide up and down your line. If I can catch them without pegging them, I like to do it that way. You want to peg it when you're fishing real heavy brush or a lot of grass and mats and stuff where you're letting the worm get down in there. You don't want the slip sinker to go down and your worm to stay up away from it. So that's why you peg it. So, But I'd rather if I'm fishing just open water or summertime fishing like we're doing right now, going down the bank fishing or fishing out on a flat, random casting a random brush under the water that we're seeing on our live scope, uh, I, I want that slip sinker to sit, slip. The advantage of a slip sinker slipping is that when you get the fish and that fish jumps, that slides away. He does not have that weight up here to be able to throw that throw that hook and come unbuttoned. So once we got that set up there, a good rule of thumb <laughs> is to use as light a slip sinker as you can possibly get away with. And, we'll break my rod and the reason you do that is you want a slow, break. slow fall. It didn't break. You know, one of the most dynamite techniques in That's there is fishing a sinking worm with just a you know, hook. We break rod either here. a piece of lead or a nail in the head of it or no weight at all because it falls slowly. So when I'm Texas rigging, I'd like for that to fall slowly as well. All right, once I've got that, I'm going to rig my Texas rig. And uh, I've bit this off a time or two, and, and honestly, what I like to do is I like to start with long worms. I use a lot of uh, 8, 10 inch worms, 7 inch worms, 9 inch worms, 12 inch worms. And I do that because big worms seem to catch a little bit bigger fish, but also you can catch several fish on that worm. You know, uh, 
don't tell anybody, but I don't have to pay Lucky Strike for these worms. I tell them what color I need, and they send them to me. So that's a good deal. And you'd think I would use a jillion worms because of that. But once I catch a fish on that worm, I want to try to catch as many fish as I possibly can. And the one advantage that I've got when I catch my first one, I've got fish scent on the worm. There is no better scent to put on a worm. You could put spike it, dip and glow on there, or chartreuse tail or something. It's got a little garlic scent to it or got some other scent to it. You could spray something on. You can dip it in something. You can rub something on it. You can make it smell like a crawfish. You can make it smell like a shad. You can make it smell like dirt. Make it smell like a bass. That's just about the best itch you can put on there. The way you do that is you catch a fish on it. And now with this big long worm, when I tear up this top part of it, which is the part you tear up, I just simply bite that off, use a little bit shorter worm, a little bit shorter worm. And now one thing about a sneaky snake is down in the end where you do not have a hook, it's about six inches long. So I can be clear off down to here and still have a pretty long worm. You see what I'm talking about there? So that's one reason I like to start with a long worm. And so all you're going to do on this is you want to look and see where your flat side is. It doesn't have a flat side. It doesn't matter. And you want to not go too far in your worm. One of the first mistakes that a lot of beginners make in Texas rigging a worm, they want to stick that worm down pretty far because they want to get the hook a little closer to this tail. You don't want that. You want the hook closer to the head, not closer to the tail. So come down here, and you want to come through no more than a half inch in. That's all. You see how far in I've gone? About a half inch. I'm in the flat side of the worm. This side is round. This side is flat. In the flat side of the worm, and I'm going to come up here, and because this is a kale bin hook, I'm going to come up here and kind of got to work around that little bin. If you've got a straight shake hook, you don't have to worry about that. Work around the bin just a little bit, and I'm going to come up, and now I've got that in there perfectly straight inside of that. Now, if you'll notice, there's the top part of my knot right here. That means that that part of the worm is going to go against the slip sinker. It's not going to allow this to scrunch up a little bit. If I had this further in, this would scrunch up a little bit and cause that worm to twist as you worked it back. And we went to whittle it in, it's going to twist. After a while, you're going to notice you're getting line twist in your line, and that's not a good deal. So do not run that in very far. You want the eye of the hook right here in the, mouth, in the nose of it. Now, here's a critical thing. Two ways you can rig this. The conventional old way that we learned as a kid how to Texas rig a plastic worm was to simply come back here and see where we're going to hit in it, and we'd come back and simply put that plastic worm in and stick it in until we had it nice and good and straight and have the plastic worm inside the hook like we do here. Now, that's a regular, normal Texas rig. Slip sinker slide down here on it. That's a Texas rig. Now, after a while, we noticed that we were missing and losing a lot of fish uh, because we wouldn't get quite as good a, a hook set on the fish. And yeah, I didn't figure it out, but somebody figured out that we're driving the hook still through plastic. When we set the hook, we're driving it through plastic. So to solve that problem, we'll take that out, Solve that problem, now we want to come back here and go where the bend of that hook is and just hold your thumbnail right there. Hold your thumbnail. Now, if you'll notice now, you're going to have to scrunch the hook up. See how that hook is scrunched up? And I want to go straight through, exactly straight through, all the way through. And now I'm going to come out on this other end. Now I've got a, a, a worm hook that's straight, and this is already through the plastic, already through. Now, if you're fishing where there's not much brush, fishing on sand or gravel bottom, just go ahead and fish it this way. Go ahead and leave that totally exposed. If you're around a lot of brush and you leave that totally expo exposed, you're going to hang up. Now, worms originally were fished on jig heads, what they now day, these days call shaky heads. We originally just called those a jig and worm. And then the Texas rig was developed by somebody down in Texas, and they actually developed that Texas rig so when a bass got a hold of it, because the early bass fishermen, me included, <laughs> thought that a bass grabbed a hold of the tail and he worked his way up here to the hook. So as he swam along with that, they wanted the sinker to sl sl uh, slide away where he didn't feel any weight so he wouldn't drop it. They actually bite the head of it. They don't do that. We were doing this 100% wrong. So when you have this this way, if a bass grabs a hold of the head of it, you got an exposed hook, you're going to catch them just about every single time. Mostly you can just start winding. I set the hook. Set the hook really, really hard. But now, if you're fishing around a lot of brush, you still can make this totally weedless, absolutely 100% totally weedless. What you want to do now that you've got this far in here is you want to slide this up to the top, move this point just a little bit, and skin hook that point back in. Skin hook the point back in the worm. Now you see what I've got here? I now have, again, a totally weedless hook. I can fish that in brush. I can fish it in heavy cover around stumps, around logs, drag it over the top of stuff, and it's not going to get hung up. It's a pure Texas rig skin hook. When a bass bites this, they're going to bite this, and when they bite down on it, 
They're going to push this point down, and look what happens when that happens. Now the hook is exposed. It's in the fish's mouth. When you set the hook, you get a really good hook, hook set. Skin hooking is much better than conventional Texas rigging. So you want to skin hook that. Now it's very important. It's very important that you want that thing to hang straight, just like I've got it right there. Whether you have it skin hooked or hooked the old conventional style, you want it to hang straight, just like I've got it right there. Because if it's not hung, it's not hanging straight. It's going to twist your line as you're working it in. Now, these big worms, they work great. Uh, I'll give to do another little video and show you how to uh, to kind of upgrade your finesse shaky head fishing, jig and worm fishing. But this is a good situation right here. Before I end this, I'm going to take this sna uh, sneaky snake off. And this is a great worm by Lucky Strike. I've caught a, a bazillion bass on that, one, that ring. It's just got so much action. This is the new Hydra Tail. And this is a six inch Hydra Tail worm. And the amazing thing about this is it's got this great tail on it. The Hydra Tail worm is made out of DOA plastic. And you notice they got these nice fancy little high dollar packaging, which everybody thinks is a big deal. I just carry their worms in a sack. I don't really care about all this, but it does look nice. I got to admit that. But uh, but this worm here with with, it, with this tail on it, you know, it's got a soft, durable tail. And this tail that's designed is called a hydra tail. If you will look at it closely, you can see that it moves a lot of water as it comes along, and this tail will channel the water back behind that worm that causes that thing to have a little extra action. And now we're going to rig it the exact same way. And now again, you notice. That's a pretty good sized worm. I can catch probably three or four or five fish even after I tear the head up. I'll just bite it off and work my way back. I'm gonna do the same thing. Now this worm right here does not really come with much of a flat side, so it doesn't really matter. And you can have it rigged where that hydra tail is, 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 is down or it's up. It's not really gonna make a whole lot of difference. I've always thought that if you had that tail pointed down, it was better, but honestly, I don't even pay much attention to that anymore. It doesn't matter whether that tail's down or up, particularly on a Texas rig. You want to do the exact same thing. I'm going to come in here. I'm not going to go very deep into that plastic worm. Come up here, barely in, that's all. Make, work it around this bend. Work it around this bend carefully because that's when you can tear the head of a hook up. Again, my weight's going to fit right down on that. It's got a nice flat top on it. I'm going to come in here and back the same way. Come in here, put my thumbnail right there, go right straight through that worm. Now you've got a perfectly straight worm. You can skin hook that back in if you want. Got a perfectly straight worm with the new hydra tail. If you hadn't tried the new hydra tail worm, you want to be sure and try them. Now, fishing this worm, Texas rig, you can fish them a lot of different ways. The hydra tail and the sneaky snake both, if you want, you can just throw that thing out there and wind it in. If you want, throw it out there, let it fall. Is this falling? Just gentle wind it. That thing is swimming along real slow. Let it fall real slow. Now, what I like to do, I like to fish the rod tip pretty high when I'm fishing a Texas rig. I want it high because the higher you have the rod, the more sensitive it is. Whether you're fishing with a Jimmy Houston Blaze series or a, a, a $300 favorite rod, oh uh, oh, that's yeah. the, that both incredible water. rods. The that higher you have the rod, the more sensitive it's going to come. You're holding your so rod tip down like this. You're not going to be able to feel the strikes nearly as well as if you get your rod tip high. Many of the best bass fishermen fish straight up and down just like this. When they get a bite, we'll talk about what happens when you get a bite in a minute ago. When you get a bite, whoop it out. That's right, whoop it out when you get a bite. So the higher you have your rod tip, the more sensitive it's going to become. Now, most people like to put a little action on that with their rod tip. The biggest mistake that I see many, many worm fishermen make is they put their rod tip down, and I've heard people say put it down in about the 2 or 3 o'clock position. If you're on a clock, move it back up to noon. When you do that, you move that rod a tremendous amount. If you look down there where we're taking that, that, that plastic worm and dragging it across that concrete. I got my rod tip up high. I'm going to drop it down. I want you to keep your eye on that worm as, as I do it. You drop it down to about 2 o'clock, 2 back to noon, about down to 2 o'clock, come up. Did you see how far that worm moved? Did you see how far that worm moved? It does the exact same thing when it's in the water. So if you've got a bass laying down there, if you've got a bass laying down there, and the worm comes in and it falls down, you let it fall down all the way to the bottom. That's a good way to do it. Let it fall all the way down to the bottom. You drop it down to the two o'clock position. You're going to bring it back to noon. You drop it down there to that, and you do that little move like I did. That thing's going to move about three or four feet in the water. So a bass is laying here, sees that worm land over. That looks pretty nice. That might be something good to eat. All of a sudden, that worm jumps up and goes zoo across his head. Lands over here. He goes, whoa, super worm. 
or something. I don't know what they're thinking. But many times they won't bite it when they're doing that. So you have just thrown your bait where a fish was, and you just simply took it by the fish too fast. It just didn't look good to him, and he won't bite it. Many, many times he won't bite it. So here's what you want to do. Now, you want to throw that thing out there. Keep your rod tip up high. Just move it a few inches down and move it up. That's it. That's all you need to do. Don't overfish that worm. Now, I want you also, and I'm going to pitch that thing back out there again. I want you to notice also, keep your eye on that worm. I'm going to hold it up here, and here's what I'm going to do. Just drop it six or eight inches, move it up. Now look at the way that worm's moving. Same scenario. Ooh, boy, that worm looks good. Must be that new hydro tail worm Jimmy's talking about. Ooh, that looks good. Oh, look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it. Oh, it's right here. Come Whip it out, whip it out, whip it out. You got it. So don't overfish that worm. Move it, move it, move it very easy. Now, the hook set. Let's finish this up by talking about the hook set because that's the fun part right there, the hook set. You can set the hook one of two ways. Either wind down, drop your rod down, and set the hook, and you want to move your rod as fast as you possibly can. Hook sets are all about speed. I saw him down. there and get it. Yeah, I mean, like I, that. I, I you want to hear that rod go through the air. Thing. If you could I see your rod moving through the air when you set the hook, it's probably not setting it fast <laughs> enough. The other way is what we call a whip technique, and a whip technique is where you've got that bait out there. I don't want to jerk that thing back there and hit me in the head. And you get the bite, and you're going to drop and set in the same motion. It was like snapping a whip. Drop, and set, drop and set. Drop and set. Drop and set. Fast. Yeah. You want to move that rod fast. You don't yeah. have to have great big arms. You don't have to be six foot two. Little bitty girls set the hook just as good as big strong men if they develop rod speed. That's what you want to try to develop is rod speed. Guys and girls, that's an old-fashioned way of looking at plastic worm fishing. Can I tell you, even today, with all these new worm techniques we have, and them taking even old techniques like jigging worm fishing, call them shaky head, take the old Charlie worm technique that Charlie Evans really developed years and years ago, calling that a Nico rig, a Nico rig, selling you little pieces of lead nail for about a buck a piece. When you can go to your hardware store, store and buy little nails for a couple dollars, you can buy like 100 or 200 nails, snap that head off and use those in your, in your plastic worm for a Nico rig. So all of those techniques that come along now that have developed Texas rigging is still from the Great one out there today. And remember, 